Oh, dang, we're recording. Hey everyone, I'm James from Glaze Life, and this is the 17th episode of One Dune Review. So welcome, welcome to the 17th episode, we made it. Today I'm going to be switching up from the norm, and instead of reviewing, you know, movies and whatnot, I'm going to be reviewing a video game. A video game. The video game I'm going to be reviewing is Halo 4's campaign story mode. Now, there's two parts of Halo. There's the, you know, the campaign mode, which is the story, and then there's the multiplayer. I'm just going to be focusing solely on the campaign and the story along with it. So I ran through the game on heroic mode, and I beat it, completed it, finished it, and I'm ready to share my thoughts um, about the game. So let's just uh, dive head first in this and start this off with the quick plot run through. Just like all my reviews, I may drop a few spoilers and hints. So if you're one of those people who like to be absolutely surprised and don't like anything, you know, any spoilers, go ahead and stop this now. You've been warned. I'll give you a second. There's your second. So Halo 4 takes place four years after the events of Halo 3. You know, in Halo 3, we see Master Chief going to sleep and do into the, the cryo sleep. So Master Chief is up and awake, and Cortana, his AI counterpart, sidekick, little chicky, she tells him that the Covenant are boarding the ship, and that the ship that he's on is heading for a new Forerunner planet called Requiem. This is important because most of the uh, campaign takes place on this planet. Now, Requiem is the home of a new species that we do not know about called the Promethean. So you have that whole new, you know, huge part of this new species, new race going on, and there's the other part, which is uh, Cortana is dying. See, Cortana is this artificial intelligence chick who uh, Master Chief can put in the back of his helm and she, like, talks to him and she's in his head and, like, you know, she's very much alive. She has a personality. She's very sexy. And, um, sexy. I lost my train of thought. Anyways, AIs have a life expectancy of seven years and she's going on her eighth year. A part of an AI shutdown process is something called rampant. She's going into that rampant stage, which is basically, she's going insane. So yeah, you have the experience of battling this new race and, you know, learning these new things about the species, the Prometheans. And then you have the battles with the Covey, which there's kind of a twist to that, but it's a lot of the same stuff, you know, with the Covenant. And then you have the kind of, like, traumatic love story going on with Cortana and Master Chief and her dying and him trying to save her life. You kind of have that, that story, you know, going that way, too. So those are the three main things that uh, take place in Halo Force campaign story mode. Just like always, let's move on to the things that I liked about the Halo 4 campaign. First off, let me start it off with the graphics. I know that's so cliche, but the graphics are absolutely beautiful. No, seriously, I know it sounds like a no-brainer, but the graphics are, like, really breathtaking. Like, I'm not a big, you know, watching cutscenes and the cinematics in, uh, in any video game. I always skip them just because I don't care, but I, it had me, like, second-guessing. Like, I had to look very closely to see if it was, like, real. Like, I thought, is that real people acting? You know, or is it CGI? And it was CGI, but it looked that good, and it was that great. Uh, 343 Industries did an amazing job. You know, if you play this campaign, watch the cutscenes, watch the cinematics, you will not be disappointed. The next thing I liked about this game was the, you know, the battle going on with the new race, the Prometheans. You know, in all the previous titles of Halo, you always fought the Covenant. That was always the race you fought. And although the, the storylines were tweaked and um, they were different, you know, it was the same species, the same, you know, lineup of uh, Covenants with the Grunts and, you know, the Elites and, you know, all those different type within the Covenant. This time around, you have the Prometheans, which you are something new, something you've never had to battle before, and you have the different species within the Promethean race that you have to fight, and you don't know how to kill them. You, don't know how, you, know, you, know, you don't know their weapons and, you know, the, the way they react to things, and it's like a whole new experience, which really, you know, was made the story more compelling. Another thing I liked was the love story. I mean, it's not really, like, your typical love story, but there was, so there's something there with Cortana and Master Chief. You know, with Cort with Cortana dying, or her, you know, her AI life expectancy coming down to an end, it brought out all these emotions in Master Chief that were never really typically shown. He's really kind of a quiet, subtle, you know, just an army guy. Just get the job done. He didn't care. He didn't complain. Once it was done, it was done. Move on, you know, killing the next, you know, alien. So this brought out a lot of emotions to him that we haven't really seen before until he was like a young boy, um, you know, finally, you know, becoming a super soldier and leaving his parents and whatnot. At least from reading the books, I, I've experienced that. You don't really experience that through, you know, through uh, the video games. 
So we have Master Chief trying to save Cortana's life, and it's really kind of, you know, it's really interesting, and, uh, you know, you start to care for their relationship, and you really, you know, start to care for Cortana, because, like I said, she's pretty hot, um, but not just that, you know, she's just, just the way, you know, their relationship is, you know, he's trying to save her life, get her back to the Infinity Ship to see if, um, you know, they can, they can, they can get her fixed. So that part was really great for the overall story experience. And finally, the story was truly epic. I've played all the other Halo campaigns with the exception of ODST. I know I need to play it. People say you need to play it. It's one of the best ones. I had the game. I just never went through the campaign. But I played all the other titles, and this one lives up to every single one of them. You truly live up to the super soldier that you are in Master Chief. Really awesome experience. Couldn't be happy. All right, now let's shift gears and go to the things that I disliked about the game. And honestly, I'm really digging deep here. There's not a lot that I didn't like, but just for the sake of, you know, critiquing this game to its core, I'm going to toss a few things out there. Uh, the first thing that I could think of, and it's not that big of a deal, I know, but uh, finding ammo. Ammo was kind of a big deal. It was spawning me a lot of times with a BR, which is a battle rifle, or a DMR, which are two, like, you know, mid to long range weapons that, you know, could do a lot of damage, get fast kills, but you wouldn't have a lot of rounds in it. From time to time, they would have these drop pods to get more ammo, but most of the time it was either Covenant drop pods or Promethean drop pods, which some of the, you know, some of those weaponry were, were are good and are useful, but a lot of it isn't. And, you know, when it spawns with something that's really useful and really awesome and you can do a lot of damage with, and you have to downgrade and you're constantly using these weapons that are kind of crappy. It's not that fun. So you asked me just being picky, uh, nothing too big, but just a little, a little naggy. So the last thing I'll complain about, and I know a lot of people will be like, wow, dude, really? But, uh, was the difficulty. So I played this through on heroic mode, which there's like an easy mode, a normal mode, heroic, and then legendary at the top. I think that's the four modes without me looking. Now legendary is truly legendary. Like I tried to jump in there on, on solo and got totally wrecked. I was getting my face owned. Me and a buddy of mine went through co-op, and we were doing Legendary, and it's still hard. I mean, you still have a hard time with two people, and um, not you know not a lot of fun when you're to you know totally getting you know wrecked. So I started on Heroic, and I gotta admit, this Heroic seems like a step up from other Heroics in past games. I mean, I I had a long time going through this campaign. I died a lot. Not gonna lie, um, I consider myself a fairly good Halo player, but I found a hard time going through Heroic mode. You know, I got it done. I beat the game, but it took a while. Um, some of the missions, some of the, uh, yeah, some of the missions were tough. You know, I found myself dying a lot and getting frustrated. I just feel like it was, it might be a little too hard. Um, maybe it's just me. Maybe I, maybe I suck. I don't know. But, um, just for the sake of disliking something, I think that difficulty needs to be tuned out just a little bit. That's just my opinion. Um, just my opinion. But on a side note from that, I really do feel like I accomplished something. If I beat it on Heroic, I'd like to beat it on Legendary. Maybe I'll do that with, uh, with some friends or whatever, but... Um, I felt good, you know, from beating it, so I guess, I guess, you know, it was worth it. Anyways, ramble, 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 ramble. Let me conclude by saying this game is truly epic. The story is new, the story is intriguing, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Anyways, it's time to wrap this up, and just like I do with all my reviews, the one dude in a review rating. After putting many hours into this campaign, watching all the cutscenes and, uh, Kicking the butt of the Covenant in the Promethean. I give the Halo 4 campaign story mode a whopping 9.8 out of 10. Boom, son. Boom. It was a truly epic experience. Um, one of the best, you know, experiences I've had inside of a video game as far as the story goes. Um, definitely recommend playing it. Watch all the cutscenes. Please watch them. Um, it's well worth it. You see the time that's put into something, and it makes you feel good. You know, it makes you feel like your $60 was, you know, well worth it. And, um, yeah, you won't be disappointed. Well, that wraps up another One Dude Review. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to our channel. Click the button below. It just takes a second. Thank you for watching. Uh, check out all our segments on Glaze Life. Follow us on Twitter at Glaze Life so you can be uh, up to date on all our video releases. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Glaze Life. Do that now. Go do it right now. Pause. And do it. That's a mouthful. Just said all that crap. 
Uh, plugs, 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 plugs. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. I know what you're doing. Really? <laughs> 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 <laughs>